Hey everyone, I'm back at Sumerian Brewery for another Whoop Race, and I'm super excited to be here. It's always a ton of fun. And today, I brought my Shutterbug 85 with Shark Bite. Uh, if you haven't seen this before, I made a whole video about this build, how I built it, how I put digital FPV in this little package. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link down in the video description. You can check it out. But today, I'm trying out something new. This camera I have swapped out for the Nano camera from HD Zero and Runcam. It's a brand new camera. So originally, Shark Bite had two cameras. The the Runcam Nano HD and the DigiSight uh, from Fox here. And then HD Zero got together with Runcam and made a micro camera. It was way better than those original cameras. So this one is the same sensor, same electronics, same image processing as that micro camera, but it's in a smaller package. And somehow it's even lighter than the DigiSight that was on here before. So that's kind of a win-win. And I'm hoping this picture quality is good. If it looks anything like the micro, that's gonna be a great sign. So I'm gonna fly around in here, get an idea of what it looks like in this kind of lighting, and it should be pretty cool. All right, I recorded that introduction before I had actually flown with the camera. And so when I said it should be pretty cool, that turned out to be a pretty big understatement. Uh, this is actually an amazing upgrade over the previous nano-sized cameras for this HD Zero Shark Bite system. Um, the original cameras, they were already better than analog. You could see more than analog, but they didn't give you that, wow, this is HD kind of impression, right? Like it was kind of somewhere in between. They claimed 720p resolution uh, when it first came out, but myself and others, we looked at the image and it was definitely better than analog, but not really what I would have expected from 720p. Well, it turns out the cameras were the problem because these new cameras from HD Zero are just better resolution, better clarity overall. I can see more details and it's just a much nicer image. I let other people try on my goggles um, at this race and at another race and everybody's impression is just like, wow, this is shark bite, right? Like it just looks so clean uh, and crisp compared to what people are used to seeing when shark bite first came out so it's awesome to see the system continue to improve uh, this new hd zero nano camera and the micro camera uh, are also just a great improvement to the image so is it worth buying this camera to upgrade existing one that's kind of up to you but if you're building something new i would definitely get one of these new cameras i've heard that fox here also has a new camera and i've heard some promising things about that but i haven't actually tried it for myself so i can't really compare that one as usual, you will sometimes see little sparkles or blocks of data that are missing from the picture. That has nothing to do with the camera. That has to do with data that's lost in the radio transmission. And the HD Zero system chooses to let you see that so that the rest of the picture can be presented with the correct timing instead of retransmitting data. So you will see some of that in this video, but actually I was pretty impressed with the reception. This is 25 milliwatt. There's at least one other pilot flying and the environment is made of concrete and stainless steel everywhere. It's a really pretty rough environment for RF. Uh, but when you consider that, this is actually pretty clean. As you can tell, I was not flying this drone competitively at the race. I was just flying around, having some fun with it and testing out this new camera. Uh, the races we're doing now are actually 65 millimeter 1S only. It's a spec series and that's actually really cool, but it's not something that this particular drone would qualify for. But switching from the analog to the digital uh, at the end of the race here, just the upgrade in image clarity was pretty amazing. Like you can see everything clearly and I wasn't sure how well it would do with the lighting and the amount of motion blur. There is a little bit of motion blur when you go fast, but actually the important stuff you can still see pretty well. So that was pretty awesome. I also took this drone to another race a few days later and just flew around, had some fun, same kind of deal. So here's some more footage if you wanna see what it's like in a little bit different lighting conditions. I'll let this play for a little bit and then I wanna show you on the bench how it compares to the other uh, HD Zero cameras. Here's the drone I was flying. Again, this is my Shutterbug 85 formula. It's an 85 millimeter 2S swoop, and that's the HD Zero Nano camera right there. I've got another one so that you can see it up close, and these were sent to me by Ryan Quillette. He in turn received them from Carl over at DiviMath, so big thanks to Ryan and Carl for sending these out for testing. 
Here you can see it's got run cam printed on one side, HD0 printed on the other. There's an optional back plate that can go on it and uh, that helps to hold the MIPI cable in place. One thing I want to point out is that this camera is 14 millimeters wide between the mounting holes. That's the standard size for a nano camera, so it should fit in most mounts that support a nano camera. But I do want to point out that it's actually 16 millimeters tall. They're often square in the back, 14 by 14. This one is actually 14 by 16, so that could affect some mounts. But it didn't affect this one. It fit in perfectly in this mount that I made for the Shutterbug 85. It's just a drop-in replacement, so super easy there. The weight of the camera by itself is 4.1 grams. Now the Runcam Nano HD was about 4.2 grams, and this is 4.1, so it's even lighter. If you do use the back plate, 4.3, so that's what you're looking at for this. In comparison, this is the Foxier DigiSight V2, and it comes in at over five grams. And that's if you remove the wires. This comes with analog wires glued to it, which is really annoying, and it would be even heavier if you left those wires in. So you can see, moving to this camera, it is at least as light as the run cam, significantly lighter than the Foxier, and the image quality is a huge upgrade. So I'm really excited about this camera. For comparison, this is the HD Zero micro camera. It weighs six and a half grams. And these two cameras have the same sensor, this one just has a bigger body and a bigger lens. And in case you're curious, this is the Whoop that I was using for the actual race. Yes, it's running Quicksilver firmware. I mentioned that in a previous video and I've continued flying with it. I've learned a lot more about Quicksilver now, so there's some things I really like about it and some things that I would like to see changed. So I'd love to tell you more about Quicksilver, but that's not what this video is about. Hopefully I'll find time to make that video in the future. As usual, I am making this video entirely in my free time. FPV is just something that I love and I'm happy to be able to bring good hands-on information to all of you. So if that's something you appreciate, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like and subscribe buttons that would just help to show your support for me. If you're interested in this camera, I'll put some links down in the video description as well as some links for related videos like the one on this drone if you're interested in checking that out. So thanks for watching to the end and I'll see you next time.